New gaming systems like the Xbox with Connect are encouraging couch potatoes to get up, get active in the comfort of their own homes. The key card system was placed in all traditional dorms in the University of Memphis campus, excluding the Carpenter Complex. Administration says they applied the system in order to make students feel safer while on campus. It's starry night here at America's largest urban park, Shelby Farms. Viewers can get an environmentally friendly light show as they ride through in their cars, pedal on their bikes, or take a stroll. Memphis. North America's distribution center is a region of complex transportation, making it the home to the largest cargo airport in the world. But in a couple of years, it may host one of the biggest railroad hubs. The development of Norfolk Southern's $112 million intermodal terminal in Fayette County is still in progress, but the effects of it have already been specified. Trains run uh, much more efficient than trucks. It's going to be less fuel usage, uh, far less pollution less traffic uh, congestion. The advancing train yard is part of a 2,500 mile rail network stretching from Louisiana all the way up to New Jersey called the Crescent Quarter. Memphis was picked as one of the gateways for the Crescent Quarter because of its strategic location near the Mississippi River. Rossville was selected as the original construction site because of its highway access. But after much debate from Rossville residents, it was moved to another part in Fayette County. The new location still poses many problems for some residents, and they fear it will turn into an industrial park, much like the intermodal facility by BNSF Railroad here on Shelby Drive and Lamar Avenue. One of my concerns is that with all the construction that's coming and going, it's going to limit the amount of time me and my granddaughter will have to spend outdoors. She loves going outside. And I'm fearful with it, all the construction, I wouldn't feel safe with her playing out in the yard. However, one of the pros would be the boost to the local economy, which is much needed, and job growth. As part of the stimulus package, the U.S. Department of Transportation has awarded the project $52.5 million. Rudy Husband, public relationist for Norfolk Southern, said construction is planned to begin in early 2011 and hopes it will be completed by 2012. Vivian Haynes. Fayette County Insight News. It's New York Fashion Week, but at the University of Memphis. Friday, the school's Black Student Association held its 42nd annual fashion show at the University Center. The Black Student Association has been around for more than 60 years, and to keep it going, uh, the fashion show is its main fundraiser. We have the fashion show every year. Some years it hasn't been as successful, but this year was definitely a success, and we raised a lot of money. The fashion show brought in various clothing lines from Memphis and surrounding areas, and even as far as Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, we have some great fashion tonight. We have Stiletto Bar, we have um, Prepared Fashion, we have BAM Fashion, um, we have just tons and tons of fashion. I mean, the girls and the guys are going to be absolutely gorgeous. It also featured local talent from Memphis, including Pat 24-7 and Pro. The annual fashion show is BSA's largest fundraiser of the year. Last year, proceeds came to only about $200. This year, it more than doubled that, making the total close to $4,000. I think this year's fashion show was a lot better than the other one, not to downplay the last year's fashion show. But I think this one was more uh, higher class. It had more uh, boutiques involved, and we had more models. And I think it was a better overall show. Co-chairman of BSA said the fashion show is more than about making money. It helps promote diversity and student involvement in campus activities. Vivian Haynes, University of Memphis, Insight News. The time to prepare for a natural disaster is now. Since Memphis has seismic activity, we are more likely to experience an earthquake. But how exactly are you supposed to get ready for a catastrophe? When Katrina hit Louisiana in 2005, many were killed simply because they did not know what to do. The Mid-South Association of Contingency Planners held an expo and conference here at the University of Memphis FedEx Institute of Technology in order to help tell people what to do in the event of a natural disaster. The expo featured businesses like the EMA, or Emergency Management Association, WorkSafe Technologies, and other companies to help us get prepared for a natural disaster. Our purpose is to make sure that we share information on uh, disaster preparedness, uh, tips and tricks, and uh, making sure that small and medium businesses as well as large corporations are prepared uh, both for their businesses to recover 
after an event, also their employee base and, and really the community in itself. It also had disaster prevention demonstrations along with speakers whom experienced natural disasters themselves and were able to answer consumer questions. Well, I asked a question regarding my daughter. My daughter has a pre-existing illness and I understand from all the evacuees with Katrina, they had a really hard time accessing their medical records and that's one of the things that concern me. Katrina survivor and keynote speaker at the expo, Dr. Tyrone Davis, says there are several ways to ready yourself or your business for a natural disaster. The most important thing he recommends is saving money in more than one nationwide bank. This is key so you can have access to it after the event. You can't stop a natural disaster, but you can prepare for it. And doing so will save you time, money, and possibly the life of others. This is what many took away from this learning exposition. Vivian Haynes, University of Memphis, Insight News.